What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. Finally it's not dead anymore. It's not one video and just sail off a cliff. It's actually time. It's hockey season. Almost at least. Still like a month away but for that the prospect tournament starts and for that I created this nice thing that's now coming out I hope you hear it. Now what is the prospect pyramid? I hear you ask already. Um, <laughs> the prospect pyramid is basically how rank prospects through five tiers, um, actually six tiers, sorry, six tiers of prospects uh, through the highest one, which is tier one, which is generational prospect, which is like the best of the best. This is where Conor McDavid was in his year. This year I would say Rasmus Darlene, potentially Sedina would be in this category, like the best of the best prospects in the league right now. Next one goes into Superstar. Only this is like Mitch Marner, Nylander. Um I would say guys who are like just about below the ceiling. Panarin would be in that category as well. Somebody guy who can reach that probably sometime have a point of game se point of game season, but not all the time. Now and from there it then goes down, 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 and down, and until we ended in the last one, where you have the Worst of the prospect, worst of the best, I guess. It's still, if you make it as a prospect, you have a shot at the NHL. So, if you're under this list, well done. You've done well. Now, in case you don't want to know more about what this pyramid is, I'm actually going to leave a link down in the description to Steve Dangle's videos, who is a content creator on the Toronto Maple Leafs in a similar style that I am. Just a billion miles better. But, <laughs> well, I mind that. But he will then kind of go through a little bit better and a little bit more detailed uh, what a prospect pyramid is and how it's ranked and then you can also kind of compare that list to what I made and see if you agree with my list and everything else. And in number one for the Minnesota Wild I have... Oh, were you expecting me to say anything? No, I don't have anyone in number one in tier 1 for the Minnesota Wild because this is just for the best of the best. This is for the best prospect in the league and I don't think Minnesota has one of those. I think they have somebody who's close and generally was thinking about putting there for the longest but I don't think they have that just yet. So tier 1, nobody. We can scratch that off with a big X while I write my tier 2 which will be filled with now. Nah. Why have I put Kiel Caprizov in the second tier? It should be an easy thing. Why he isn't in number one is probably the bigger question than why he isn't put this high. He's an Olympic gold medalist. He ha is one of the best talents in the KHL right now. He is an amazing player uh, with such a good upside, so much skill. As well as having basically played it at a men's level for quite a while and being very, very good at it. What's the downside? The Wild has to wait a long time. He's 21 years old. He should be like right on the brink of like making it in the NHL. And no. Yeah, basically we have to wait a long time. Because we, for some reason, didn't try and get him to North America. So we didn't have contact with him. Now we are in the phase where, oh god, this guy is a good player. For some reason we did not see that. We tried to contact him, but he's already signed with the KHL. So he has two more years in the KHL, which may or may not be a bad thing, but right now we could really use a player like Kaprizov. But he's in the KHL for another two years. Then hopefully the fact that we changed GM will work wonders for us. Because I think since the change from Fletcher to Fulton, I think we had more of a talk with Kaprizov, we want to get him here and I think he wants to get to play with, on the team. So that's a huge bonus for the Minnesota Wild if we can get this guy. Let's go to tier 3 and see what I have there. For those of you who can't read my writing, which I understand, I have four names down here. I have Jordan Greenway, Luke Koonin, Ivan Ludina and then Dmitry Solokov. Now, all of these four in Tier 3 aren't bad players, they aren't bad because they're in Tier 3, don't get it that way. All of these guys are amazing players. 
Gordon Greenway played um, during the playoffs last year for the Minnesota Wilds. Although he didn't do as well as I think some hope, but he's still young, so you can't really blame it on him. Luke Kuhn as well was a part of the Wilds for a little bit. Didn't play as much, but have been good in the AHL. So he's definitely also up there. Realizing now I had at this point that I wrote uh, Lonia wrong uh, and he isn't called Lodina like I wrote sorry about that um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about him even Lonina I think that's how I pronounce him I'm very sorry for you that uh, is having an amazing season and has had three amazing seasons with the Riadas where I personally think he has been doing really well um, having had almost a point in the game for the last two seasons. So so yeah, in other words, I think this guy's really good as well. We have a lot of really good guys here. So again, as I said, this is almost point in the game in the OHL from Lodina, and he is not here. So being in Tier 2, being in Tier 3, really good accomplishment, guys. You guys are probably going to make the team at some point. So I'm excited about this. Now. This guy over here, Sukolov, he excites me more than the other three almost. And I was actually thinking about putting him next to Kaprizov. But he's a player we had in the seventh round two years ago. We picked him in on as a seventh round pick two years ago and was a little bit like, yeah, who is this guy? And then last year, the year after we picked him, he decided to get 72 points in in 64 games for the Sudbury Wolves in the OHL, which is an amazing stat. Even got to play in a ga two games in the AHL. Really good stat, and you go, oh, this guy's a player. Next season, and last year, he got 50 goals. Not just point, 50 goals over two, two clubs in the OHL. The Barry Colts and the Sudbury Wolves. This guy is going to be a goal scorer. This is going to be the guy who's going to score a goal outside Parise. And I'm pretty sure that this guy's going to have a good season in the AHL where he's going to probably play next season. And he's only 20. This guy's only 20 years old. He will be a really good player and he will be a player we can go look and be like, oh, where did he come from? Oh, he's a seventh round pick. He was picked 196 overall. It's that a, that's like a massive steal by the looks of things. And if he continues, this guy is going to be exciting. Like, having him on one wing and Kaprizov on the other, and then maybe having a guy like Grandon in the middle. Can one dream, please? That that might be a really good line. But yeah, the Russian, Russian finish line is going to be amazing. Now, tier 4 time. Here's where the tier ranking starts to make sense because you will have gotten so many arguments that is so pointless over who is the Wild's 10th best, who is their 7th best, who is their 8th best prospect and no, that, I'm not gonna do that. I mean, this is tier 4 players, some may argue that some could be in tier 3, some may argue that some of the tier 3 best could go in here, some may argue that this Caprice up should go in tier 1. If you argue the other way around, you're dumb. Now, in this tier, we find our first round pick. Philip Johansson. And I think, while he was a pretty interesting pick, it was really off the wall pick. And I was like, when picking him, I was like, who? Who exactly is this guy? But, for those of you who kind of watched the Swedish League, says that he's alright, not great. And it's like... It's a pick where you go, this is a weird pick, because you look at his stat and you don't get too impressed. He played junior hockey for the most part in Sweden, done alright, then played for his season in Sweden, and that was like, not great stats? But at the same time, you can't take all from stats, I haven't seen too much of him, so I put him safely in here. I don't know what he really have to offer, and I need to see him play more with men before I really judge him. So that's why he has ended up here. Probably one of the more low first round picks, to be honest, in in this kind of draft cycle where everyone goes, oh, this draft pick is either amazing or bad. No, this guy's just, I need to see more. He might just be a okay player and okay is fine. That's a good, good player. 
Okay, it's good, guys. Tier 4 is not an insult. For those of you who can't read my writing, I'm gonna read up who I have on this list. I do not blame you if you can't read my writing, but I'm not gonna talk about each player individually anymore, because that's gonna take forever. I'm gonna take the more noticeable ones. But for those who want to know, I, we have Alexander Kovanov, Connor, Devore, Cousin Saucy, Luis Bel Belpendio, I think, Belpendio, Jason Kloss, Shaw Mason, and Brenna Men Menel. Now, I'm sure I mispronounced all of that, but nevertheless, let's go to some of the more important ones. One of those who sticks out here is Mason. Sean Mason was having such a good year two seasons ago. Was amazing. Was looking like a player who could probably be in tier two. Having so much upside. But unfortunately, disaster happened for him last year. And he literally haven't played. He missed an entire year due to injury. I think it was like a knee injury um, with his ACL, which sucks so much. And that. That is just hard to come back from. Even if you're still young, you still have time to progress. And I do think he will. It's still a year where you could have learned so much more. Where he could have continued riding away. Where he was amazing. Um, I'm not in the junior ranks. I'm not sure what he will do now. But yeah. This will be a good test for him. And I hope he just shows that he's still amazing. Because then I will be the first to move him from here to this or that one. One of those because that's how good that season was that he had two years ago. I still believe in him. I'm just being careful. I don't know how affected he is by his injury. So please be good. Please be good. Two other guys who's on this list who probably has at least like a say that some people in Minnesota have heard of because they actually played on the team is Justin Plus and then we have Carson Saucy. Saucy played in the playoff last season and actually got a few games with us. Have been alright with Iowa and um, has done well. Where the same can be said about um, Justin Klaus, who has had a really good AHL career so far. But still needs like that little bit more in terms of NHL games. He has one game, I think, on his belt, which is good for this part. But he's still on tier 4 for now because I do not know where his ceiling is. He looks alright, yet not amazing. So tier, f tier f 4 is for him. He could potentially move up and down. This is not bad. He will probably be like a top 9 man, maybe bottom 6 but that's a good thing. That you make the NHL, you get like a good, pay, good contract. You look at some players like Tom Wilson. I would not put him more than here either. But he just won a Stanley Cup and made makes millions, so not a bad thing. Same with Carson Saucy, who he's probably gonna be like a sixth guy, fifth guy on the team, maybe fourth. He's gonna be within that that area of defensemen, so this is not bad for him either. And um, yeah, those makes a lot of money, so this is not bad for them. Tier 5 time. In Tier 5, we have a few names now. And now we're getting into the late round picks, which may or may not be good. We don't really know kind of area. You, it isn't an insult again. If you're drafted and you you up a prospect to an NHL team, well flipping done. You've done what most can't do and you're one of the best players in the world. Quite simple. If you've been drafted, you've been one of the best at your level. So, all of these players on this list, even if you're in tier 5, even if you go into tier 6, not a bad pick. Not a bad play player, not an insult. Being on this list is amazing. Trust me. Who's in tier 5? We have Simon Johansson, Damien Giroux, Sean Bonneris, Jake McBain, Bryce Mist Mistley, Jacob Golden, uh, Gustav... Uh, Brahman, I think. Brahman. And then we have a name which I'm a Finnish goalie called Kapo Kakunen. Kakaku? I don't. Too many dots over letters makes me confused, damn it. Okay, just to be in big rate. Didn't put him down there just because of his name. He actually has a reason, and I will get to that. <laughs> For these players, it isn't. It is probably pretty likely that you haven't heard about any of them, and I wouldn't blame you if you have. But 
we have a few players which is actually all right the one player that is on this list is the finnish guy which i will explain why i have over here and he is the goalie that i'm kind of having on this list because i think he has a lot of he's shown shown in the finnish league that he can do well and the finnish league isn't bad goalish major later and he's actually been doing really solid i think he has a has a plus 920 save, save, save against average, um, which is really good um, in the Finnish league for the past two seasons. So he's developed well. I don't know if it's a player that the Wild will use, but he is a possibility. So I think he's one of the better players that is on this list. So well done, Capo. Also, side fair. Having a player called Capo on your team is amazing. I really want that to happen. Now, most of these players are really, really young players who is like late picks last year. So we do not know that much about him. Um, Simon Johansson is a player who is still in Sweden and I do know has been um, rendered out to the Altsvenskan, um, which is the second tier in Sweden. So he's finally going to have that feel of actually playing with players who are older than him, he playing with men, which I think is going to be a good thing for him. Um, he has played in Djurgården's uh, youth system, which is actually a pretty decent youth system. I like the Swedish system, and it's going to teach him a lot of discipline, which may be useful. And most of these players outside that is going to go to university, which I'm perfectly fine with. They can go there for sure. Now, there is one player who's going to play in the OHL and has done well since being picked, I've, or has done well to be picked, mind that, um, which is going to be... Damien Giru, who I think has done well with the Saginaw Spitz in the OHL. When you look at his stats, anyway, he looks like a good point producer. Has become, has doubled his point totals from from last year, from the year before to, to last year, which is always what you want to see. So hopefully he has a really good push and he can go up and be a really good steal in the third round, fifth round. Sorry, but that is what is still to be yet to see. So here, maybe next year, hopefully I can put him up here even higher maybe but i think this is probably where he will go next year if he has a good year if you have a really really good year i can put him up here but we'll see what he does for now he's in in this tier hopefully he can move up to the next tier but yeah most of these are more or less hopeful for progression in the next year either through university or through the juniors and in tier six we have one name that we put Right, everyone else, everyone else that isn't on this list up here in the five tiers, they're in here. I don't run away the best 30 prospects and go with who is the lowest, who, why that. Worst prospects of the of the best pro, of the prospects which made it and is on the contract or in the wild system. Tier six, where everyone else is. So here it is, the Minnesota Wild prospect pyramid. Where we start off with Kirill Kaprizov, then move down, 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 until we have the low, where we just completely collect them all and say, this is everyone else. And you might think, oh, somebody who I forgot, probably in this one. And it is possible I forgot one, and then you can scream at me and come, but I'll probably comment back and see where they are supposed to it be. So, yeah, for now, this is where I think they should be. What do you think? And while you're there... Go like the video if you liked it. Tell me what I could do better. Tell me how I can improve. And if you'd really like it, do subscribe. I would love that. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.